Wow, tomatoes! I didn't know you were into gardening. My uncle gave this to my mom. We thought of growing our own since we use tomatoes a lot for cooking. That's good. I've been meaning to ask you, is it true that a lot of fruits and vegetables that we enjoy today will no longer be there in the next few years because of climate change? That's a possibility. But climate change, as well as other global issues like overpopulation, prompts agriculturists and scientists like me to continuously find solutions to prevent that scenario from happening. Really? But you work for nuclear science and technology. Do you mean there are ways that nuclear technology can solve this problem? Yes, nuclear technology has so many applications, even in the field of agriculture. How is that? One way is by mutation breeding. Wait, I thought mutation through ionizing radiation might be harmful for humans. Yes, but what I'm talking about is mutation breeding for improved agricultural crops. Oh! Plant mutation breeding is the process of developing or producing plant varieties with desirable genotypes and phenotypes for specific purposes. In a way, it's like accelerated evolution. Wow! Accelerated evolution! How is it done? By using mutagens. What are mutagens? Mutagens are physical or chemical agents that may start errors in a plant's DNA, thus starting the mutation. A mutant plant is developed by exposing or introducing a plant material to undergo mutation. This is a supplementary approach in plant breeding making it a non-conventional method of crop improvement. The aim is to breed the plant into having desirable characteristics, which include resistance to biotic stresses, such as pests and diseases, and resilience to antibiotic stresses, such as salinity, drought, and flooding. Wow, those are cool mutant powers for plants to survive climate change. I remember you said before that ionizing radiation can cause mutation. Is that used as a mutagen for plants? Yes, ionizing radiation is one of the mutagen agents used for this plant breeding. The main kind of physical mutagen is short wave rays, which penetrate living cells and alter genetic material. Examples of physical mutagens are as follows. 1. Gamma rays from cobalt-60 and cesium-137. 2. X-rays from the X-ray generator. 3. UV rays from a UV lamp. 4. Beta particles from phosphorus-32 and sulfur-35. 5. Neutrons. 6. Ion beams or electron beams. Chemical mutagens are also used in plant mutation breeding, such as alkylating agents in the form of EMS, or ethyl methane sulfonate, DES, or diethyl sulfate, and enamurea. A physical mutagen such as gamma rays from cobalt-60 is an ionizing energy that can change the chemical state of the compounds that surround the DNA or the DNA itself. This ionizing energy can directly or indirectly damage the DNA bases. This DNA damage can either be partial or detrimental, and partial damage is the optimum effect to induce changes since DNA has natural capacity to restructure the damaged parts. The restructured DNA strand is the potential point of the mutation. Once the development is complete, mutant crops are now ready for registration. However, this takes time as these are not immediately observed and are achieved through continuous breeding. It usually takes breeders to go M7 to M9 generations before they can achieve stable mutation and a stable mutant. Does that mean the Philippines have yet to achieve such viable mutant crops because it takes that long? It's good you asked this. Mutation plant breeding has been practiced in the Philippines for so many years now, and there are already several mutant plants that have been developed here. We have what is called atomic rice, the first mutant by radiation mutation breeding developed by PAEC, BNRI, an improvement of IR8 of Erie. It's a breed that has better protein quality and better grain yield for farmers. 
There's also a breed of bunchy top virus resistant banana that was developed by the Institute of Plant Breeding. Mutation breeding is also applied to ornamental plants, most of the time to alter aesthetic characteristics. This is called the Moraya exotica. This species was genetically modified by the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute, or PNRI, by plant breeder Ibarra Santos. This is smaller than the dwarf species. Its leaves are very small, compact, and shiny, ideal as a bonsai plant. I am attracted to its flower's jasmine-like smell. Through radiation, the plant height has been reduced from 7 feet to just 1 foot. This is a very famous thing among plant collectors. These measures ensure the intellectual property of the plant breeders and the country in terms of national plant genetic resources. Mutant crops are also filed in the Mutant Variety Database, the joint effort of the International Atomic Energy Agency of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States in their website. Wow! So most likely, scientists all over the world are already undertaking mutation breeding for plants that could not survive climate change. Yes, mutant developed studies often target one or two traits depending on the utilization of the crops. The desired traits for agricultural crops are usually high yields, early maturity, and improved nutritional value. But for both agricultural and non-agricultural crops, among the desired characteristics are resistance to pests and diseases, and adaptability to adverse environmental conditions with improved medicinal or pharmaceutical compositions. Apart from mutation breeding, nuclear science also helps agriculturists study soil management. Keeping the soil for crops healthy and viable is important in keeping farming sustainable. For example, nitrogen-15 stable isotopes are used to study how N fertilizers can be used more efficiently by farmers to get more yield for their crops. That's awesome! Here you go. This is for making sure that we won't run out of fresh produce in the future because of nuclear technology. No problem. Thanks for these. Mm -hmm.